Hence is not cheat engine is, well, not cheat engine, but it's a mature and viable alternative for Linux with a lot to offer. Pence has been in development since 2016, which, believe it or not, is now six years ago. It's a front-end tool built on top of the GNU debugger and the ScanMem project. Pence was developed primarily for reverse engineering games, but can be used in any reversing projects. So when you load up Pence, the first thing you're going to notice is that the UI is a little bit inspired. So those of you who are familiar with Cheat Engine are going to find the transition pretty easy. Now up here in the corner, you'll see we have five buttons. This button can be used to attach to a process or launch a new one under the control of Pence. These buttons save and load a cheat table. This will launch the documentation and this button will launch an about window with credits and licensing information. Now, if you look over here on the right, we have two buttons and this one opens a GDB console window, which we'll get into a little bit later in the video, but for now, we're going to have a look at these settings. Now, I'm gonna point out some of these settings that I find the most useful. First, I change this update interval to match the freeze interval. And the update interval is the rate at which the values displayed in the address table will update. So I change that down to 100 milliseconds. Down here, you can make pins auto attach to a process, which is pretty useful in some cases, but I don't need to do that right now. Over here, you can check your hotkeys, and these are actually very essential in pins. You're probably going to want to remember the hotkey to pause the process because you can't do anything in pins unless the process is in a suspended state. And finally, down in this debug tab, I like to check this GDB logging checkbox. And this is going to make it to where we can view a GDB log in this memory view tab down here. Now the workflow in Pence is extremely similar to Cheat Engine. Up here you can start value scans and you have more or less the same options here. This is where your search results will appear over here and then down here you have your address table where all of your added addresses will be. So I have this Tetris clone open and I'm going to attach to it by clicking this button up in the top left and filtering for Quadrapostle. Now I'm going to start a game and pause at zero score and do my first scan for this score value, which is probably an integer of some kind. Okay, so now I'm going to resume the game and score. Now I'm going to pause it again and search for this new score value. Now I can break the process by pressing F2. I can add this address to my address table by double clicking it, and then I can change the value to whatever I please. Now if I score again, this value should update. And there you can see that my score has updated. So now I'm going to open the memory view window and see what we've got going on there. So we have four main panels in the memory view window. We have a hex dump, we have a disassembly output, we have our register values, and we have a stack trace. So in the view tab, you can view a list of your bookmarked addresses, a more in-depth stack trace, a list of your breakpoints, and a list of every function in the application. We can view that log file that I enabled earlier. We can view the memory regions. We can restore changes that we've made to the instructions, and we can search for references. In the debug tab, we have our debugger actions and their associated hotkeys. In the tools tab, we can inject a library. We can call a function in the process. We can search for a specific instruction or we can analyze the disassembly. So now I wanna do something a little more interesting than simple value editing. So I'm gonna minimize the memory viewer really quick and right click on our score address down in the address table. And just like in Cheat Engine, I can find what writes to this address. So I'm gonna click that and try to score one more time. Now I'm gonna pause the game again and I can see that we have two results. We can see a disassembly of the instructions that wrote to this address. Now these add instructions are likely what's incrementing our score. And if we look at this result, we see the same thing, but the difference is with the second operand to the add instruction. In the second result, it is 0x2710. And in the first result, it is 0x28. So I'm gonna say that this second result is probably what is writing to our score at this moment. So I'm gonna stop the process with F2 and double click on this address. And now I'm going to set a breakpoint on this address resume the process and try to score again.
Now you can see that we've hit this breakpoint, and I can verify that this is what is writing to our score by changing the value in this register. And you can see our score went up by a significant margin. Now unfortunately in hints there is no inline assembler like you might be used to in Cheat Engine, so you're going to have to edit these bytes in the hex editor down here. Now if we move up one instruction we can see where ECX is being set. And fortunately for us this is going to be a very simple change, so I'm going to right click and press show this address in hex view. Now I'm just going to edit these two bytes here and that should make our change permanent. Now we can test this by resuming the process and scoring one more time. Now as you can see our breakpoint has been hit, we should score a lot more than 10,000. Now Pince includes a Python library that you can find the documentation for in help libpince inside the memory viewer window. You can use this library to programmatically interact with Pince's backend. Now if you remember I said in the beginning that Pince relies on a GDB backend and we can communicate directly with this backend through the GDB console window. Now using GDB is out of the scope of this video, but Pince integrates GDB expressions in a pretty interesting way. For example, I can type an expression in an input field like a commonly used library function and Pince will resolve the base address of this function. I can also use this to retrieve the value of a register and a whole bunch of more cool things. Pince has a long roadmap laid out with many more features planned, such as cheat engines, ultimap and pointer scan, single and multi-line code injection, automatic ESP and aimbot, and disassembly charts. Pince is not the only cheat engine alternative for Linux, and if enough of you are interested, I'll be happy to cover more of them in future videos. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to be notified of future uploads. If you haven't already, check out guidedhacking.com for a step-by-step -step introduction to game hacking and an ever-growing catalog of content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.